Hey tea heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, top draw fermenters tea. In this video, we are gonna be unveiling and tasting our latest cooked pua. This video is gonna go under the single tea tastings and the drinking with friends playlist. If at any point in time you enjoy this video, then please give the video the thumbs up. The more thumbs in the air, the more tea videos are gonna come your way. And if you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel yet, go click that button. I'm here in the garden on a sunny day with Celine. Yeah. Say hello. Hello, everybody. It's been a rubbish summer in London. Well, it's been a pretty rubbish summer in London. And yeah. uh, any opportunity to get out in the garden, we are taking it. And today we are going to be unveiling our latest ripe or mm. cooked pua cake. Mm -hmm. we, my we my love latest this. addiction. Yeah, we literally. love this tea. This is a really, really, <laughs> so really good. great tea. So we're going to be doing a full tasting. And without further ado, let me show you this cake, or you can show the cake. Yeah. It's a stunner. It's a really beautiful cake. Um, it's got lots and lots of buds, really, really tons and tons of buds. It's really bud heavy, very, very high grade. This is Gong Ting grade, Gong Ting um, um, grade what is, tea. What does that mean? So Gong, Gong Ting, Ting? Gong Ting uh, grade is generally considered to be the highest grade of uh, cooked pu'er because it's really rich in buds. It's very fine picking. So you know with mm. sheng pu'er, with raw pu'er, there's um, uh, the, the picking tends to be a bud and three, maybe three four leaves. leaves. Yeah. So you get the big leaves and the big thick buds. But with uh, cooked pu'er, the, the more prized pickings um, is generally considered to be the buds and the very young leaves not so much the large leaves. So mm. you remember Sacred Owl? Yeah. So Sacred Owl was our, la our last um, raw, uh, ripe, ripe, poor. ripe poor cake. Yeah. It was a long time ago. I know you've been waiting for a long time, yeah. but it was our last ripe poor cake and it was a gushu. It was really, really unusual because, you know, making ripe tea from gushu is considered to be kind of unheard of, but mm. you know, we managed to find some some guy who managed, who, who did, Some batch. who did it, but it was all really big leaves. Remember, it was, it was all big, big leaves. leaves. Yeah. And I think that basically what they had done is they had taken the bud in the first few leaves to make like good, right, either either raw yeah, probably raw pua. Yeah. And they had saved um, the big leaves and they had made it into a fermented, mm. cooked pua cake. I wish and they did that more often. I know, but you know, cool. and, and so it was amazing because it was a gushu, but it was larger leaves. This is really, really, really young, young pickings. So it's gong ting. Let's quickly scope it. Season, this was picked in spring um, 2012. Okay. Spring 2012. And then what happened was they fermented it, they cooked it. If you don't know what I mean, uh, we've done articles about cooked pua. I'll put mm. some links in the description below. Um, but they uh, fermented it and then they pressed it into cakes in 2013. Mm. So 2013 it was pressed in cakes and then it's been aged for four years. Um, the aging with cooked pu'er does have an effect, not as big an effect as with raw pu'er, but it does have some effect. So um, this is 2012 pickings. Mm. The cultivar is the Dai Ye Jong Asamika uh, cultivar or variety. The um, origin is uh, Bulang. Bulang, we love Bulang, oh. right? Is it the same area where Bulang Black is? Yeah, where we have lots of puas from Bulang. We've oh. tasted lots of black teas from Bulang. Bulang is one of the most consistent areas in Yunnan, always producing really, really high quality tea. So this is from Bulang in uh, Yunnan province in China. Mm. Um, the picking, as I said, is very uh, young leaves and buds with a predominance of buds. So lots of buds in this, which is great. Mm. And the elevation is about a thousand meters. So that's your scope. Let's get on with tasting. Do you want to heat up this yeah. teaware here? We have a 200 mil guy one here and um, we have 10 grams. So we're going quite heavy. We've got 10 grams of the uh, tea here. Um, and um, so we recommend about five grams per 100 mil, but you can play around with the parameters. As always, please guys, if you buy this tea, you know, the parameters that we uh, uh, make are put on the wrap, uh, that we suggest are put on the wrapping, but this is just a starting point. Make sure when you um, get your tea and you break them into cakes, be very careful, um, break them into large chunks like this. And then the easiest thing to do is just kind of compress them gently with your fingers, give it a little wiggle, and then it's kind of a, a nice zen satisfying it experience. Is, it is. Take it's your really time satisfying. with it, you know, and once it starts to crumble, and loosen up. Then it then it goes much quicker, isn't yeah. it? Try to be very kind of um 
uh, not too heavy caring. handed. Yeah, caring exactly. Caring with your tea. Care for your leaves. You're <laughs> yeah. going to have a nice experience. If you if you rush it and you crush them too much, then you are going to, you know, it's going to... Just get dust. You're going to impact the brew a little bit. The texture of the tea is going to be impacted a bit. That's so true. it's worth taking your time. We haven't really done this on this one. Oh, this one came apart uh, really nicely. It's satisfying when you get one and you just uh, you crunch it and it just kind of <laughs> yeah. falls apart. I love it when you just blend it a little, little bit and then it just... It just unravels like that. Yeah. It's so nice. So these cakes that we've got here, they're 400 gram cakes. So they're going to give you a lot of servings. At least, I mean, you know, 40 proper gong fu servings with a big, with a large um, guy one. If you're going for like 100 mil or, you know, 150 mil, then it will give you obviously 60 or 80 servings. And you're going to get lots of infusions out of this. Mm. Lots and lots of infusions. Um, it doesn't let uh, you down. It's so good, honestly. Like every day, I've I've been thinking, okay, what should I have today? It always comes up in my head. It's just a yum yum. A yum yum. It's just a yum. -yum. It's a yum yum. <laughs> Do you want to show these leaves to the yeah to the camera? Yeah. Sorry, you get quite obsessed. There's still pieces in there, but we're conscious of time. I would normally spend a little bit more time. Hold it. Hold it. Holding. <laughs> okay, good. So, the color of the leaves, I would say they're kind of um, auburn, carob, brown. You know, carob is, you know, that kind of cocoa uh, substitute. Chocolate. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Carob, brown, nice red, orange notes in there. Copper. The, the buds are orange, copper. Really pretty, pretty yeah. tea. For a cook pour, very pretty. Yeah. Okay, if you can pour that water out. Yeah. Let's give it a schnifter. Schniff, schniff. You go first. Mmm. What you getting? I get the caves, you know, those um, cooked notes, but then I get um, uh, like a steamed milk smell mm. that comes through. <laughs> very comforting, very comforting is, yeah. smell. It's not so kind of this um age smell you yeah. know it's more creamy yeah so the overriding theme you will find um in this tasting is the level of uh, how how gentle and and um easy drinking this tea is yeah. and i don't mean that in a dilute way so it's an easy drinking green or an easy drinking you know poor tea yeah. it's just simple it's really really delicious and complicated and it's got so many notes but it's just so it, it doesn't have any of this it doesn't have any of the spiky notes yeah. that you might associate it doesn't have too much earthiness there is earthiness yeah. it doesn't have too much of the antique books in the cellar wood exactly. it's there but there's a predominance of creaminess and yeah and cocoa na cocoa it's, all the, those kind of things that are universal that most yeah. people will like yeah it's like you know usually when you show a, a cook pour to someone the first time they see it and they smell it they go whoa what yeah. is that yeah. whereas with this one you kind of if you close your eyes and you just smell it you think it's like and like a, a hot chocolate and milk kind of yeah. smell you know, it doesn't shock you in that in that same way so it's yeah. got cocoa but not not too rich, not like a not, not like rich. a lapsang no. kind of cocoa. Um, it's more this kind of vanilla creaminess, yeah. evaporated milk. Evaporated milk. Bit. Okay, yes. let's put some water in and smell the. Uh, I think that's more spot on than steamed milk. It's more evaporated milk. Similar. Yeah. So with this tea, uh, with all cooked pu'er teas, can I do it? Yeah. Sorry, I, kind of I always on. overtake, it's really bad. Um. With all cooked puettes, <laughs> you want to give it a, a rinse. Um, and if you're doing it with a guy one, you know, lift, make your guy one gap a little bit, you know, don't be frightened to, to give it a bit of space. Not too much, obviously, because they are small leaves. But there will be, because it's fermented, it's broken down, there will be a, quite a lot of, like, dust that you collect. So it's sometimes quite nice to just give it a couple of quick rinses, very quick, just to kind of um, see if you can get rid of as much of that powder as possible, because mm. that's inevitable with all fermented tea. All right, you can have a sniff of this. 
Does it give you, like, if you have less powder, does it give you more of the, a certain type of notes? Well, it does what two do things. Say? So when you've less powder, it's going to brew differently. I mean, so if you have powder, mm -hmm. it's going to brew a little bit more astringent. But I find it's more the texture of it. I mm. don't want the texture of it oh, to be affected. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And equally, I'm just going to give this Gong Da Bei a quick rinse. Just because I want to... Oh. Make sure I okay, get rid of now you get the love of cooked puas, that's that foresty smell. I, I really enjoy, I really enjoy that. So it's freshened up, right? Yeah, it's freshened up. Oh. But again, it's, it doesn't hit you with this kind of intensity. It's just a really l lulling you into it, I find. So forest, but what do you mean? Like, um, it's not so much wet soil, it's more cavernous, like minerality and forest, forest. Yeah, so I'm getting wood, but I'm getting more uh, antique. There is antique wood. Antique wood, There's, yeah. Or cellar, 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 like a cellar. Like a cellar. Like, you know, the wood in a cellar. But really, really... Um, oh my God, and now it smells of fruit, like a bourbon or something. Smell right, that. yeah. Got a bit of cask. Cask, yeah. yeah. a bit of wood cask. Um, yeah, a little Fits bit. Fits with the cellar thing. The Cellars, wood casks. But yeah. then there's a top, slightly acidic top note. If you breathe with short breaths, little acidic um, notes to it. Um, which is like, kind of like a yeah, sherbet, a slight that? sherbety Sherbet. fizz to it. A slight sherbety fizz to it. And there's this creaminess to it as well. It's so weird when you do this different smelling thing. Yeah. Short and long. And so <laughs> salted fudge, salted fudge. Um, some oh sherbet and yes. cellar wood. Totally, totally caramel and salt. Yeah, caramel, salt, but totally. more fudge, I think. That vanilla, yeah, yeah. vanilla fudge notes. It's just, okay. You're just so bloody good with tasting notes. Just. I've sat with this tea a fair amount. I still have I, but I, I just drink it. <laughs> I'm just like. <laughs> In, <laughs> no, you don't. That's not true. You're, you're underselling yourself. Um, right, so. Brewing time for this, I would do quite quick. Uh, we write 10 seconds on the uh, brewing instructions, which basically means after about six or seven seconds, you're pouring because you'll want your 10 seconds to end here. So it's probably a bit over. I've done it probably about 15 seconds. I tend, I've noticed <laughs> to go over whenever you want I- want strong. <laughs> whenever I film. Do you want to show the camera those leaves? Yeah. So Hold it. Holding it. Okay, very dark now. We're getting into real mahogany browns. Very, very dark. Dark leather browns. Can you see it? Yeah, or? that's good. Okay. And, um, and the liquor. Holy we'll moly. get another shot of the liquor, I think. It's beautiful. Let's, um, let's put it in the glass. Let's yeah. put it in the glass. Here we go. Oh, look at the color. Like a very ruby, ruby brown color. Oh, yeah. The sunlight is really nice. It catches it really nicely. What are you looking at? Pigeons. <laughs> it's, they're so oh. stupid because like Michigan always catches them and I don't want them to get you have hurt. No, you have no idea the horror stories we have with our cat and those big fat pigeons. You probably can't see, but those big fat wood pigeons, they really should not be in this garden. They should not be here. Anyway, do you want to show the, the color of the liquor? Hold it. So this is a, a, a very, very ruby brown, isn't it? It's yeah. got real red notes to it, real kind of uh, vibrant, juicy, red, plummy, plummy, uh, purpley uh, red notes to yeah. it. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it, but can you see it? Well, we'll try and get another shot of yeah. it anyway. Okay, so we've smelt the dry leaves, we've looked at the dry leaves, we've smelt the wet leaves, yeah. we've looked at the color of the liquor, let's focus on texture. Mm -hmm. Texture first. Drinking. Texture first. Yep. Cheers, everybody. Cheers to whatever you're drinking today. Mm. Texture. Talk texture. It's syrupy, I think, but it coats your mouth. <laughs> I don't know what else to say. It's thick, it's juicy, and syrupy. And the finish very clean very clean with a lingering of
caramel. Yeah. yeah. It's like having a fudge and afterwards having that aftertaste. Mm. It's like that. Yeah. Texture, I would say, is thick at the start. This, this tea is um, mm. a classic case of um, separating the experience into arrival and, and finish because when it hits your mouth, it's syrupy. Yeah. When it hits your mouth, it's thick and syrupy. Yeah. But it very quickly goes to a very clean, yeah. slightly dry, um, quenching finish. Yeah, the, the finish is, is, yeah. is drier, but in, in a weird way because it is, yeah, I know it's like drinking water, you know, like Don was saying, it's like syrupy at the beginning and then it's like water, it just goes straight, straight through. Like really yeah. fresh. It's really very refreshing. fresh, exactly. Yeah. So it starts off you know. thick and syrupy yeah. at the arrival, yeah. but once you've swallowed, it's very yeah. fresh. Yeah. It gives you a very fresh sensation. And I think that's why it's so addictive. Yeah, you know? maybe. It might be. Because with some cooked foods, it's more thick, 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 you know, yeah. which is also really nice. But this one just gives it that fresh. <laughs> so the thickness of this tea, in my opinion, comes predominantly because it's very bud heavy. Because mm. when you have bud heavy teas, they tend to have more of a kind of syrupy note to it. Oh yeah? They tend to have it. Texturally, I think it's also a lot to do with the hairs on the, on the actual um, on buds. The you know how they start to break down and, and, and it, mm. it produces a thicker texture. So, you know, mm. I do think that the, the bud predominance is what gives it that thickness. Because this is thicker than Sacred Owl was. Mm. But the finish is that classic, poor cleansing, cleaning, great digestive really really good after a meal or with a meal something something you know you could eat anything with this it's really really good and um we did a video last week i'll put a link in the description below where i cooked uh, or i paired food with a cooked pua again this would work but this has much more let's talk about flavors this has much more dessert like notes to it doesn't it yeah so let's talk flavors while i brew some more it, it, the funny thing with this tea is it really reminds me of I don't know if you guys had this as kids, but those um, cola cola bottles, you know, those little squishy cola the cola bottles, bottles yeah. Sweets. <laughs> yeah, it really reminds me of that. Um, Which is interesting because it's it's got yeah. uh, that's quite for me that's quite subtle, but I do pick it up. Yeah. Um, I think that the taste wise, oh. it's a combination of of cream, vanilla malt Definitely. so that so that creaminess Definitely. with that slight saltiness you know with malted shakes you know it's got this more yeah. uh yeah salty a salty uh, taste yeah. to it um so malt vanilla cream mm. it still has that little for me that little slight sherbetty fizz and i and i think that's my cola oh that's your cola yeah side. because yeah. when i was a kid those mm. cola bottles they used to be dipped in they used to be dipped in sherbet. Did yours not dip in no, sherbet? No, yeah, 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 definitely. But so they you, had both. They had the yeah, ones the like plain that. And, ones and, yeah. So there's a kind of cola bottle or that cola taste yeah. with vanilla, with malt. Yeah. Um, it's still got earthiness, but it's really, really um, uh, res restrained compared to yeah. most cooked pours. Yeah, yeah. It's a very restrained earthiness. It's a very restrained cavernous kind of taste mm. it's there it's still there obviously in spades because of the fact that it's a cooked pua but it's just so well made this is really really supremely well made and our sourcing of this tea the, the person who recommended this factory to us you know this guy is like a one of our, our gurus in in, yeah. in in china the stuff, um, he, has. The stuff he has is incredible and um <laughs> It's just really, really well made. There's no mustiness here. There's no funky flavors. There is, it's just supremely well made. The age of these tea trees, I forgot to mention, this is not a gushu. Um, this is 80 year old tea trees. Mm. So it's still kind of aged, middle aged, I would say. It's, mm. you know, young to middle aged. It's not garden tea. It's not 20, 30, 40 year old tea trees. This is 80 year old tea trees. So it has that substance, it has that. It's not a gushu, which is anything over 200, 200, you know, and 50 years old. So mm. it's it's kind of middle aged range, but really supremely well made. Let's, let's so dig well into made. those flavors a bit more. How a tea is processed is so important. Especially Man. with cooked. 
Especially, especially with, with cooked, cooked because yeah. we cooked or aged, cooked or aged. Yeah, it? but but aged depends on where it was where yeah, it was okay. kept yeah. in the storage. But with cooked, it's all about making sure that that warehouse that they're cooking or ripening the tea yeah. does, is is kept perfect in terms of. It could the, so easily like yeah, switch. some stray bacteria gets in and it's fermenting really the wrong kind yeah. of flavor notes it needs to be kept in the perfect control conditions so that they're they're, they're getting the right bacterial and and fungal um mm. fermentation is happening the right kind of fermentation is happening to really bring out all these notes so we're getting cream we're getting vanilla we're getting malt we're getting cola we're getting some antique wood um some books a little bit of kind a of paper of books, a little, a little bit, bit, of bit yeah anything else i i i get the barrel coming through mm -hmm. again like a bar bourbon barrel coming through. Yeah. I get slight like cherry fruitiness to it. Yeah, yeah. You know? But a again, a little plumminess. A little plumminess, I would say. Yeah. Plums, cherries. The yeah. Coca Cola. <laughs> so cherry Coke. Yeah. Yeah, 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 exactly. Definitely, on the sides of my tongue, a little bit of cherry Coke kind mm. of tang, um, or sweetness. The other thing that I'm noticing with this tea is that. Um, there's a there's there, there there's lots of spices in here. Yeah. Like um, I would say there there is kind of a little bit of the sweetness of star anise or the sweetness mm. of some cinnamon. But I, I think that that cinnamon, kind of yeah. I think that is what cola. You know, that's I think the thing. That's, the, that's what we're it's, trying to say. It's that yeah. cola thing. Yeah. Because cola is a kind of I know that a it's mixture. been you know <laughs> it's been made into this horrendous sugary you know. Um, Drink. drink that is uh, that is really not good to drink but mm. cola itself yeah. is essentially originally made up from a variety of herbs right right yeah. so different herbs you know it's like together. when they, they've made those like more natural cola versions haven't they yeah. it is like a mixture of different herbs yeah exactly they, yeah and a bit that's of cocaine originally Oh, but yeah. that's, a, that's a different story. <laughs> that's a different story. Um, so yeah, it's got those those herbal sweetnesses that that are reminiscent of cola. It's not it's not the predominant flavor. I would say the predominant flavor is vanilla, malt, some of the, the vanilla woody malt notes. cola. Yeah, right. Because I really get the cola. Which brings cola. us to the name of this tea. Oh yes. And <laughs> the artwork which Celine has done. I, I, I was enjoying the artwork a lot. Yeah, I could tell. It took a while. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, right, do you ages. want to reveal this to the camera? I will. No. Uh... Sorry about the wait, guys. And I'll put it in the right way. So. And yeah. There you go. Wow. All right, hold it there. Hold it there. So this is a. Oh, for some reason, my phone is not focusing. My phone Focus is not focusing. Okay, now it's focusing. Okay, so. We are calling this guy the Malt Geezer. Malt Geezer. Um, and um, so Geezer in uh, the UK is uh, a term for basically some, a, a, a guy who's kind of got street smarts, right? Yeah. A bit of a lad, a bit of a, a geezer. It's, it's, it can be used as a positive or derogatory, but usually it's, it's quite- usually It's usually kind of a sweet thing. Yeah, like it's not sweet, It's sweet, usually but kind like, of positive. It's like, ah. Yeah. Oh, that guy's a geezer. Like a lad. Like he's, a, he's a geezer. He's, he, he knows his way around. Yeah. He's, he's got his he wherewithal. He he's knows like, his, yeah, exactly. He's, he's friendly, he's fine. It's a really London kind of terminology. <laughs> yeah. oh, he's a geezer. That guy's yeah. a geezer. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, I know in the States it has a slightly different meaning. I think it means kind it? of an, uh, an old man, a kind of cranky old man, or, which kind of works as well. <laughs> you know, uh, maybe I'm wrong. It's Guys from the States, negative. let us know what geezer means. I, I think it's slightly more derogatory. Oh no! Um, no, but I quite like that, the kind of cramp, cranky old man. He is a bit of a cranky so old man. So he's a bit man. of a cranky old man. So we've taken a buffalo, um, so show it again. Oh, it's odd. So it's a, a, a buffalo, a cranky old geezer. Yeah, we um, are. He's not that old, um, but he's a, he's a buffalo. And he is um, a ice cream or milkshake salesman. Hold oh, yeah. it in one place because I've got to focus on it. Sorry. Um, and, um, and so he's, he's selling... Uh, he's selling um, Milkshakes, cola floats, you can see we've, we've pulled in all the ideas of the tasting notes. Vanilla, cola floats, uh, we've got milkshakes. We've got lots of detail in this artwork. You can take a look if you, uh, if you go online, you can see the, the different details on the artwork. But essentially, our thinking was that this really tastes of 
vanilla cola floats. You know, when you take Coca-Cola and then you take vanilla ice cream and put it on, it's been ages since I've oh had one of those. Oh my God. You know, but you know, this is essentially like a malted um, cola vanilla float. Um, and so we wanted to explore that idea and Celine came up with the idea of this buffalo because it's kind of like a, a little bit of a grouchy but kind of funny uh, character to serve you ice your, cream man. your ice cream, your ice cream man, either in an ice cream truck or a diner. Poor, poor shakes. So yeah, the <laughs> malted poor shakes. So that was our idea. <clears throat> so this is the malt geezer. Yeah. Um, the finish on this is really interesting. I don't know if you feel it, but I get this quite dry, slightly itchy sensation yeah. on the back, just on the back of my throat yeah. here. It's not, it's not uncomfortable. <clears throat> no. It's just, it's, it's weirdly slightly drying in that back bit, considering it was so smooth coming in and going yeah. through and yeah, but it's not. It kind of reminds me of, you know, if you, if you do a shot of like a, a hard liquor, like a rum or a whiskey and you get mm. that little, that kind of, that slight, slight burn. Slight burn that's okay. just lingering at the back of your throat. And what's quite nice about that is yeah. it kind of makes you want to mm. drink more. It, it, it's yeah. quite addictive. It makes you want to go yeah. back for some more. Um, and so I really actually like that, that little catch in my throat, yeah. that little dry catch in my throat, just there. If it was all over, it'd be too much. Just yeah. there, it's, it's nice. Yeah. But the sides of my tongue, it's very, um, it's quite juicy. Mm. And it's got a little bit of a kind of carbonated, a little bit of a carbonated burn. You know that, you know when you take a fizzy drink and you get that kind of tingle. Um, oh yeah. But quite like hard tingle. Like when you take carbonated water and you kind of have that drink and it gives you that slight, you know, slight burn on the sides. I'm not really selling this well. Burn, <laughs> burn sounds wrong. But it's that, it's that, that, that nice, slightly, But know, not in here, but like, what are you no, I'm getting it on the sides of my tongue. Oh, I, I, I'm getting oh no, the, I know what you mean. I'm getting the, 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 the slight, slight kind of whiskey scratchiness on yeah, the back, yeah. and then this kind of slight carbonated fizz on the sides of my tongue, and that's making me produce saliva on the sides of my tongue. Yeah. So I'm getting this kind of, yeah, I'm getting this fizzy, juicy sensation, which again brings out this whole cola idea. You're holding that in a really weird way. Uh, yeah, it is true. <laughs> Like a pencil. <laughs> you get a draw with it. You're so used maybe, to Maybe so I'll start doing like, a, a new style of holding, you know? Um, yeah, this is a. Sh show the camera this. This is, a, this is a, something I, that's coming in. Yeah. This is going to be um, something that is um, going to be launched very soon. Japanese um, yeah. tea wear. Hold on, I'm not focused. Now I am. So, Japanese um, tea wear is coming. And this is one, uh, this is something we picked up that we're using as a Gongdao Bay. From our latest Japanese trip. Yeah, so videos from Japan are coming. I know we get a lot of requests for it. They are coming. Let's uh, drink some more. You can see how dark this liquor is. You're going to get tons of infusions out of this. Cheers. Now, as it starts to go through the uh, different infusions, mm. more of those cola notes are coming out. More oh, of the freshness. Yeah. Now I'm getting a bit min more minerality out of it. A little bit more rockiness is coming. Slight mentaliness. Mm. Slight like freshness in it, which I really like. Some antique books. Antique. Some of those the, the the library notes that you know the the cooked poor library notes. But not too much. Not too much. Not no, too not too much. much. And always this creaminess. Yeah. Always this creaminess especially yeah. through the nose a little bit of cocoa through the nose as well but it's Definitely. the creaminess it's this it's this fudgy vanilla -y, malty <laughs> caramel and that's why this it's is such an easy drinker yeah because really i th there's like nothing that is risque no about it's just so pleasant yeah you know this that vanilla malty creaminess through the nose is this overriding so yummy it's just it's it, i think that pairing this if you paired this with some desserts, if you paired this with, with any kind of, anything that you would mix with vanilla ice cream, yeah. would work very well. Like a pecan pie or something like that would work, would yes. work very well. Mm, pecan pie with this tea. Oh, yum, yum. Sorry, I'm saying that a lot today. This, what, is, my new, this is my new word, yum, yum. Yum, yum. That's a, yeah. 
highly advanced words you're using. <laughs> yeah. The yum yum. I'm regressing to my childhood. <laughs> <clears throat> it's good to regress. We like regressing. Okay, so um, what about effects? Let's talk effects. So we've talked about the texture. We've talked about, we're going to smell the empty cup mm. in a little bit. Let's talk about effects. You've been drinking this tea a fair amount. Yeah. What have you noticed? Ah, <sighs> okay, it's weird because like usually in the morning I like to get a raw gushu to give me the energy boost. But sometimes, like especially with this one, I feel like it does give you a bit of energy, but a grounded energy. Like I feel mm. awake, mm. like, but not hyped. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, um, it's a really nice, it's a really nice tea effect. Like. Yeah, I, I, I think I agree with you. It's, it's an interesting one for me because um, with cooked puas, generally you're talking about very cleansing, kind of quite calming, quite grounding. Mm. That's the, the general theme with yeah. cooked puas. And, and that certainly is the true, is the, is the same here. It's certainly is true. Pairing this with food, the really good digestive. We've had meals with this, so sort of great digestive. Really mm. helps to feel, make you feel clean and make you feel yeah. refreshed. Um, but it, for me, it definitely does have a very kind of, I would say, grounding, but a little bit of a kind of happier. It's a social. It's quite social. It's not energy. It's definitely not like a gushu or a green tea where it gives you that. No. It's, it's definitely not super high in caffeine. It gives, but it gives you this feel good feeling. Yeah. It's like a feel yeah. good. You kind of want to kick back and have a chat. Yeah. And it's, it's, it's a real social, social round, feel good. round the edges. Like you don't feel edgy. Yeah. You just feel happy and social and chill. Yeah. So I would kind of equate it in the alcohol world a little bit to kind of, if Gushu is a tequila, you know, <laughs> yeah. you know, which is, things could get a bit crazy on a Gushu. If Gushu is a, 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 a tequila, this is more like you're sitting back and you're having like a dark rum and you're, uh, you know, yeah. you're just not, not, it's not like super drunk feeling, but just that nice, nice. mellow, yeah. social, uplifted. Yeah. You want to have a chat. Yeah. We've had some great, like, social, great conversation social with conversations with this yeah. tea. It's a really nice social drink. So don't just use it as a digestive. Yeah. In fact, like a cognac, right? So like a cognac. Like, you know, yeah. you have your meal, you have this, and you sit and you, you get slightly, you know, happier. Yeah. A little bit, a little bit, you know, um, of an effect. Um, and it's social and it's, and it's, and it's nice and it's, it's, <sighs> it's mellow but not sleepy. Right? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, a, it's a really nice effect. I've grown to really love this yeah. tea for its effect as well. And, um, I, and I wonder if the, the fact that it's like this mellowness is from the taste of the tea because it's quite rich kind of... No, again, you know? I think it's the buds. It's the buds. It's because, you know, buds tend to be higher in theanine. Ah, right. Well, okay, that's the buds and then, then even lower leaves. But, but those buds tend to be very high in theanine, especially if they're picked quite early ah. and they haven't transformed the theanine hasn't transformed too much in the cat into the catechins so if it's an early picked and it's buds it's going to have a, a little bit more theanine mm. um and so it gives you that little nice. feel, feel good mood <laughs> enhancement and that's you know a really a really um nice aspect of this tea mm. okay let's have a sniff of the empty cup It's one of those teas I don't want to rush. <laughs> it's like... No, I know. I, but uh, these guys probably don't want us to spend three hours drinking. For you. I downed it for you. <laughs> the leaves, oh. you can't really see the definition of the leaves too much in this shot. We'll try and get another shot of it. But it, it is It is a really beautiful, nice, yeah. dark chocolate brown. Yeah. If you do get it, even a taster, breathe through your, like close your mouth and breathe through your nose after you had like a few cups. It's so nice. The, what, what, the, the taste that comes through when you breathe through your mouth. Breathe through your nose. You uh, through your nose. <laughs> what taste do you get? Vanilla and cola. <laughs> yeah, it is the malt. Again. It's the malt. Smell of the empty cup is an interesting one. It's kind of comes at you from, from, from nowhere. You're not expecting it. No. It's got a kind of burnt note to it. I get malt 
Like Horlicks. Yeah, exactly. It's like malt. Horlicks. <laughs> Yeah, you yeah. just gave a brand name. It's a <laughs> Again, it was pop <laughs> So it's, um, it's got powdered malt, which has this salty note to it, but then there's this burnt note to it as well. This kind of slightly fiery note to it. A little bit, yeah, a little bit hot coals. Oh, when you're at a campfire, but it's like sunny and it's the next day yeah and like you know the but it's a bit cleaner than that it's not so yeah. much of a fireplace no but that's what i mean it's like the next day when it doesn't smell smoky anymore. yeah 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 exactly when it's all died down yeah. but i kind of um in my tasting notes i i wrote that it smells like a sauna like a wooden sauna oh, i think that's more like it like slightly wet wood yeah, well, I don't know if it's wet or dry wood, but but you know when you walk into a sauna and you've got that hot, the, the hot stones there, mm. that that baked hot stone that's slightly um, yeah. Oh yeah yeah yeah, it is more that more fired burnt take uh, <laughs> smell to it. It's quite hard, but it's more mineral than than woody. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's more it's more hot stones and yeah. hot, but not not charcoal. No, no, it's no, you're right. It's a real kind of interesting. I've never yeah. really smelt that on an empty cup before. That it's, it's not smoky at all. It's no, it's not smoky at all. Rock, rock minerals. Yeah. So hot Very sauna, nice. hot, hot, hot sauna. sauna, dry or wet. I don't have enough <laughs> sauna experience to know. I'm not a big sauna fan, me. Nah, it's too hot. Too hot in there. <laughs> I walk in like, <laughs> I'm like come on. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Time to go. <laughs> um, okay, so that's it. That's malt geezer. Um, and um, it's available now. We'll put link in the description below. Uh, let us know what you think. Yeah. Let us know your tasting notes. We'd be always interested to hear what you think. And yeah. um, write a review on mayleaf.com. We always uh, get the tasting notes and we yeah. can read and through them. And you get points. And so you get points. That's you true. Know. <laughs> Seeds given to you for writing tasting notes. So let us know what you think. Yeah. Um, and if you've never tried a ripe, I would definitely recommend getting a taste to try it out. You know? Yeah. This one is really easy. This is a yeah. This is one easy that drinker. I think will be quite universally liked by everybody who, um, even people who are not used to mm. to drinking ripe pure teas. So we love it. It's malt geezer. We hope you love it too. That's it, tea heads. If you made it to the end of this video, then please give the video the thumbs up. Check out our YouTube playlist. Let us know if there are any videos that you'd like us to make. If you're ever in London, then come and visit us in Camden to say hi and taste our wares. If you have any questions or comments, then please fire them over. Other than that, this is Celine. I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Thank you. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff mm. and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. See ya. Bye.